Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the main material, part five. This is going to be our last video in this series covering the basics of the main material inputs. We're going to cover clear coat, clear coat roughness, ambient occlusion, and refraction. We will not be covering pixel depth offset as it will require its own video when I get more information regarding it. So let's go ahead and start with clear coat. Clear coat, clear coat is disabled by default. It is one of the different shading models that comes with Unreal Engine 4. You'll find it in the material section of the properties under the shading model. We'll go ahead and switch this over to clear coat. When we do that, you're going to go ahead and find clear coat turns on and clear coat roughness turns on. So basically clear coat is intended to mimic a clear coat over an existing surface. So on some cars, it'll have a clear coat over it to protect the paint. Some cans will have it. Some materials have it. Acrylic is a good example. Cars is generally, cars are generally used as the primary example. So let's go ahead and see how it works. Basically clear coat is how much percentage from zero to one, zero to hundred percent, is the clear coat specific shading model used for this material. Zero being none, one being fully. So let's go ahead and set this to zero, which is our default. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our little sphere here. I've set our sphere up as green for the base color, mostly metallic, not rough at all. And if we go ahead and we look at our sphere once the material finishes compiling, Whoops, I actually have that, let's fix this, sorry. Let's go ahead and set this to zero, which was the point of our example. And we'll go ahead and compile this again. Zero is basically gonna run this through like a normal shading model without the clear coat. And we're gonna see it's going to react normally. We're not really gonna see anything special. Now, if we were to change this to one for the clear coat and we run it, what we're going to see is a thin clear coat around the outside of our sphere as we turn it. As soon as it finishes, there we go. We see a thin clear coating around the edge of our sphere. That's kind of like almost like subsurface, except this is clear on the outside. And as you notice, as I turn it, it properly everything properly goes through it as needed. So that is what the clear coat is. It's really simple, it's, it's simple. Basically it puts a thin layer of a clear coating on the outside of your material. That's what it's for. Zero is no clear coating, one is full clear coating. Now clear coat roughness is basically how rough the clear coat is. If we look at it with zero roughness, you'll notice it seems pretty smooth and we can see the clear coat pretty well. If we bump this up to let's say a one for the value, and go ahead and compile that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see less of the clear coat because it's basically been worn down, it's rough. It's kinda like it's been scraped up, scratched and such. It's not meant to appro approximate scratches, but it's meant more how much of the clear coat is left. And if you notice we have less shine, and you'll notice there's no real clear coat along the outside. It's not an exact match for real life if you're using the clear coat roughness. They recommend you keep it at very small values, 0, 0 0.1 and such, and just leave it as a good shiny clear coat. So let's go ahead and move on to our next section. Let's go ahead and disconnect these. Let me switch my model back to opaque with the default lid, and we'll move on down to our next section, which is ambient inclusion. So I have this set up for ambient inclusion. We're gonna go ahead and hook up a brick texture for our base, a normal, for a normal map. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the green channel of this mask material for my ambient inclusion. If we were to go in here and we were to show just the green channel, what we're gonna see here is our ambient inclusion mask. Basically, 
Ambient occlusion is adding in extra shadow detail. So looking at this, it's basically going to add this on top of our existing material as more shadow detail. As you can see in the crevices, along the darker crack edges, we're going to get more shadow detail. And then of course on our flat surfaces, we're not going to get any shadow detail. So again, it's, it's a way of adding in shadow detail to darken existing shadow detail, where in real life shadows are going to basically darken themselves when you're in deep crevices and cracks. So if we hook this up and let's go ahead and we're going to actually on this one we're not going to hook it up. What I meant to do was to go into my other material that I made. Let's find it. My ambient occlusion version of this and it's already hooked up and ready to go. So this is a version already hooked up, ready to go. It's basically like I set it up before. It's just a different material. I need to do this for example purposes. So on our left hand side here, we have my original material, which is this one, which does not have the ambient occlusion hooked up. And then on the right hand side here, we have the ambient occlusion hooked up. Now, if you look at them, we're not going to see any difference. Why is that? Well, ambient inclusion does not work with movable lighting. It works with static lighting. It's baked in. So if I was to go ahead and build this, since my only light in the scene is a movable light, what's going to happen is nothing. We're not going to see any difference with or without ambient inclusion. I need to go ahead and turn this over to static lighting. And go ahead and build it for static lighting. It's going to go ahead and use light mass. It's going to build out my static lighting map. And you're going to see the right hand side change and become darker. Now these are using the same shaders with the only difference being the one on the right having an ambient inclusion mask set up. And you can see the difference if I can control my mouse. If we look at this side, we see normal detail. If we were to move over here, we can see more detail baked in to the shadows. Zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, that is what the ambient occlusion does. It basically adds, bakes in extra shadow details where the artist or the designer felt that there should have been more detail. Where lighting itself, because keep in mind this is a normal map. There's no actual physical presence for a light to shine down and create darkness or lightness because it's using a normal map. So ambient occlusions helps a normal map give extra shadow detail. So it's simple enough, you just plug it in, make sure you're using static lighting. And that is going to be our ambient occlusion node. Let's go ahead and disconnect this, move this down, and we're going to move into our refraction node. This is going to be the last one we're going to cover. And we'll go ahead and set it up. I'm going to go ahead and set this up as a base color of white. Uh, let's set it up as... Oh, I'm trying to remember how I did this. Oh, crud. Let's see, we had a base color of white. This down here is going to be our refraction, so I can hook that up. But if you notice, okay, and this is my opacity. That's what it is. Okay, and this is going to be non-rough. So if we look at this, we have an issue. I can't use refraction. Well, refraction is part of the translucent blend mode. It'll turn on opacity and turn on refraction. We're going to make our item 50-50 opaque. Basically, it's going to be semi-transparent. And then I'm going to use this little setup here for the refraction. Basically, this is taking the Fresnel, which is how light affects the edges of an object. And it's going to alert between two different values. Basically, the 1.4 being a more specific value for the type of glass I want to use. And as we get from the center to the edge, it's going to affect basically how much refraction is going to be available. So if we go ahead and apply this to, uh, let's apply this to the sphere. Okay, should be applied to the sphere. Now we gotta wait for it to actually finish building the material out, which should be done. There we go. And it should be done anytime now. Main material. Okay, well we should have this working. Let's try. There we go. Okay, there we go. Couldn't get it to work. Now it is. Okay, so if you'll notice, at the center point here, I have straight 
no refraction. I have straight visibility. And as it gets to the edge of my surface, we're starting to hit our refraction. You notice how it starts to curve, it starts to bend. Now I'm using the Fresnel in order to make that happen, but the point is the refraction is going to basically affect how the light refracts going through itself. And it's usually only seen when the surfaces go through themselves. So for example, at this edge, we're looking through multiple points of a ref clear, transparent surface. That's why it's going to refract upon itself and we're going to see the slight edge. It's a lot more visible when we're actually looking through this cube. Let's get rid of this one. Let's go ahead and look through this cube here. Let's turn my lighting back on to movable. There we go. So we have this cube. Now if you look at this cube, we have an edge here on the floor and an edge here on the floor, but then it jumps and it does this little part right here. Well, that's refraction. If we look over here, you notice it's kind of refracting the bottom part. If we were to take our refraction and shut it off, just to show you what I mean, hopefully it won't take an hour to compile this time. Finish building. We're going to go ahead and we're going to see the identical material, but we're going to see it without the refraction turned on. I'm sorry for the wait. Normally it doesn't take this long. Apparently it's not happy today. And finish building. Finish building. Still waiting. This is extremely annoying. There we go. Okay, so sorry about that. If you notice, our line goes through straight and we have a perfectly transparent 50% item and we're not seeing any refraction. This is normal transparency. And then again, if I hooked up the refraction, and unfortunately we're going to wait again, you're going to see the refraction that we've gone ahead and we've set up with the refraction being refracting of the light inside of it. And basically the, if you noticed it on the cube, especially the light, we our viewing angle went through and then went through it again. So we're basically seeing through the top and the back side. And that's what's making a refraction inside of the glass. And then it's giving us our refracted look. I know it's kind of long winded, but refraction is basically how much refraction there is in terms of refractivity inside of your translucent material. There are standard values. All those things will be linked below from the Unreal Engine documentation. Basically things from usually like 1.2 up to 1.5, depending on the type of material. You don't have too much leeway. They're pretty specific standards. So if we look again, you'll notice seeing through is perfectly fine. But once we have multiple angles involved, we start getting refractivity. And I set it to 1.4. That's why we have this much refractivity. If I was to change it to a smaller level, it's going to become much smaller and apparent. So that's it. That's going to go ahead and cover our main material nodes. We have covered almost all of them. We did not cover pixel depth. That will be in its own video later. At this point in time, if you do have any comments or questions, please leave them below. On the left hand side, we have the details. We have 11 different sections. These will all be covered in their own video separately. So we'll have 11 more videos covering the different parts of the properties and examples on how to use them. Once that is completed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover all of these nodes. If you look here, here's the entire list. And there's a lot of nodes. Some of them are duplicates. Some of them can be combined, but some of them have sp pretty specific things we're going to cover, like the rotator node, the time node, texture coordinate offsets, pixel, sp pixel world space, the Fresnel node. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make specific examples covering them. We're going to cover things such as making grass move that you can paint on your terrain, maybe making it where your rocky textures are using world displacement and world space in order to become more physical in the world rather than looking flat and cover things such as making your own blend shapes and your own linear gradients and things like that. So 
Again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you want to see anything specific covered first, go ahead and put a request in. And you have a good day.